Today we're looking at this, the Nissan Prima Star. It's my daily drive and it's horrible. This isn't just a Nissan Prima Star, they're also known as the Renault Traffic and the Vox of Avaro. Pretty much all the same van with minor tweaks, most of them visual. In fact, if you start pulling panels off of this, you'll find Renault stamped on almost all of it. My one is a 2011 facelift model, long wheelbase. Yeah, the short wheelbase looks really ill-proportioned compared to this. I mean, I don't like this very much, but at least it's not a short wheelbase. Okay, so we get three engine choices in the UK. We get the 1.9, the 2 litre and the 2.5 litre turbo diesel. They're all four cylinder and they generate 80, 115 and 150 horsepower, respectively. Now, it might sound like fairly small numbers, but the amount of torque it generates and the way they're geared really helps with that. Now, so that brings us on to transmissions. A six-speed manual and a six-speed automatic are available. Now, I've never seen or driven an auto version, but I do know they exist. I can't really comment on how good they are between the changes, so I'm just not going to. The gearing on the six-speed is pretty, pretty impressive, if anything. The only issue you've got is, in the UK, these things are limited to 50 miles an hour. Not that most van drivers drive them at 50, but the only way you can use the sixth gear is if you manage to get it to about 60, 65. And even then, it doesn't really shine until about 80. Don't ask me how I know that. This is a common problem on Eurovans. This horrible fuel flap cover, it breaks all the time. I don't know how many vans I've seen where this thing has literally just come off. These door handles are cheap and nasty. And as you can bet, as they get older, they all fail. Visual style is very plain and very square, I guess. What do you expect from a van? This tail light is just, why do they design it this way? It's made of that horrible bumper material. Pretty much fades and goes all nasty. So you're going to have to sand the whole thing down to respray it. And plastic primer and all that other stuff. It's probably going to peel. It's a mess. The door handle on the back is an interesting design choice, I guess. Only trouble is that a central button, it sticks most of the time. Today it's fine. But if it sticks, you have to wiggle it around a bit. Well, most people tend to buy a van for moving people and things, so let's talk about that. There's a parcel shelf back here. That's not common in all commercial vans. But you'll notice there are no rear luggage area lights whatsoever, except for the ones that I added myself. You can see the two top ones up there. The one on the right, the one on the left. And then down at the bottom, I've also got them on the left and on the right, which you'll see in a second, along with the subwoofer controls up there. I have a sub and amp combo in there, which I'm going to show you now. Yeah, you can just about make it out. It's a little sub and amplifier by Kenwood. And it's just tucked in there where the back row of seats are. It really improves the sound system. I did upgrade the speakers as well. Uh, but you'd think for something its size, it wouldn't be very good. But yeah, it does the job pretty well. Typical Eurospec van, the seat only folds on this side. That side you either have to squeeze through the gap or come all the way around. Climbing into the back is still relatively easy in terms of the amount of space you get, but this thing's so high off the ground that you're really struggling. I mean, I have literally watched people try and get in here and they're grabbing hold of the grab handles and they're heaving themselves up and everything. It's just an utter nightmare. I'm hoping when I drop it down on the suspension, it's going to be better. Legroom in the back row is okay. It's actually not that bad. But you can definitely tell you're in a van. There are no extra features or fancy bits back here. You get no buttons of your own. You get no cup holders. You don't get anything back here. You just have to sit there. the middle row, again, you get some okay legroom. But again, you're not getting anything fancy. You don't get cup holders back here. You don't get any buttons to play with. You get nothing. Okay, so I've tried to make some changes in here to make it a bit more livable. One of those was the seat covers because there's no option for leather in these that I know of. So all of them have cloth interior. And it's not even nice. I mean, even with these covers on, they're not even all that comfortable. 
But here's the major design flaw right here. I always cover this, don't I? Seat belts and such like. But yeah, it's attached to the body, not the seat. So as a result, it needs two sets of belts. One clips in on this side and one clips in on that side. If I can get it. Like so. Now here's the problem. When somebody wants to take this off and they're not familiar with the way this all works, they'll take this one out first. Then they'll realize they've screwed up, then they'll take this one out. And then what happens is, they just discard this. And it goes against the bodywork, and it gets jammed in places. There are scuff marks, there are actual dents in here now, where the seatbelt's been left hanging and somebody's tried to close the sliding door. It either jams in there and the door doesn't close properly, or the door just bangs off and won't close at all. And it's only after the offending individual has decided to slam the door on five separate occasions before I've come around and stopped them and said, the seatbelt's stuck in the door. Let's take a look at the floor panels. Yep, they're very good for keeping clean. You can pretty much mop those down. In fact, I seem to remember once or twice I've just power washed it down just for ease of use. So that side's pretty good, but you're not going to get a luxury feel out of this whatsoever. This piece here should be black, same as the rest of it, but it's not. And as a result, it gets very muddy and muggy very quickly, and it's a nightmare to clean down. You never get those stains out. You'll also notice along here, the, there's exposed metal of the seat frame everywhere. They made no effort to cover this up whatsoever. There are plenty of design flaws in this van, but this one takes the cake. This is the cup holder. That's how easy it comes off. Every time someone tries to get in this van, where's the first place they grab? They grab this damn cup holder and rip it clean out. And then they spend five minutes apologizing to me about how they broke my van. And I'm just sitting there going, ah, it's a design flaw, don't worry about it. I'm used to putting it back. Since we were talking about the cup holders, let's talk about the rest of this dashboard because it's so poorly designed. There is so much wasted space here, it is absolutely criminal. This section down here, yeah, that's fine. You can store stuff in there, but the glove box itself isn't actually that big. There's not a lot of space in here. This huge space above it is virtually useless. Anything you put in there that rolls around it will pretty much just roll around all over the place and make so much noise it'll piss you off. If that doesn't happen, it's going to fall out. This top section up here, yes, you can put stuff in it, but nowhere near as much to fill the space because of its poor design. The only advantage it gave me was allowing me to mount this tablet system here, which I used a metal desk mount and I screwed it to the panel up here above the stereo unit. It means I can't necessarily have a double den without changing the layout slightly, but it's fine, it works. And then this, this is supposed to be climate control, is it? It's far from that. It's so basic, it's unbelievable. There isn't even any aircon. This is a 2011 van. Why does it not have aircon as standard? Explain that to me. Let's look at this silly bulbous structure sticking out here. If you are unfortunate enough to be the middle person in the front, you had better have tiny little legs, otherwise you are going to be crammed something chronic. This van is severely lacking in extras. There's no cruise control, there's no aircon as I mentioned before. We do get electric mirrors and electric windows, but that's about it. And that steering column, that's only adjustable in and out, not up and down. There's no reason for that. The pedals are a good size and nicely spaced, but it still feels a bit weird when you climb up into this van. Look at the height difference. There's the ground, there's the first step, and there's where you actually sit. I'll give them credit for the door pockets, they're a good size. But the rest of it just feels very wasted in its space. And these door handles are so unbelievably low down that you can barely reach them. This is interesting though. The airbag switch for mounting a child seat is right here, making it very easy to access. So I'll give them that, that's a pro. It does have electric windows. Well, good job it's got some electrics and electric mirrors. And its system's nice and easy to use. Uh, the little tweeter over here is my addition when I upgraded the speakers in this whole van. It's much better now. 
So it's nothing special in terms of power output. It's pretty cheap and nasty and it's poorly designed. All right, so are there any vans out there that are better than this? Well, yes, the Volkswagen uh, Transporter and Crafters are superior to this, and the Mercedes Vito and Sprinter are also superior to this. Yes, you'll pay a bit more, but you get what you pay for. It looks pretty plain. Is there anything you can do about it? Well, yes, there's quite a few different mods out there available for this. There's full body kits if you want to go crazy. There's little bars for the front, there's side steps that just bolt on, there are various companies selling the little spoilers for the back just to give it that little bit of extra look. And this is the same wheel fitment as BMW X5. So that gives you lots of different alloy wheel options. I personally have opted for the uh, wide banded steel wheels because I think that actually suits the look I'm going for. And it's easy enough to get uh, lowering suspension for this. You can even get custom kits that drop the suspension overall height to 80 millimeters lower than standard. Getting in and out of this thing can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Once you get used to it, it's okay. But let me just demonstrate, right? You can step down and out nice and easy once you know how. But to get in, you're pretty much having to grab here and here and you have to hoist yourself in. If you've got knee problems, you need to start grabbing things or find grab handles, which funnily enough, there isn't one on this side. Why is that? So you grab on and you kind of twist yourself around and put yourself in. That's fairly easy for myself because it's still pretty mobile, but oh, I could just imagine somebody bigger than myself with a leg problem is going to have real difficulty getting in and out of this thing. Let's talk about the driver's area specifically now because there's so many gripes with this, it's just not funny. The seat itself feels like a rickety bar stool when you're driving, it's horrible. One of the first things I want to do on these vans is rip this seat out and replace it with something better. There's no armrest. These things can go do thousands of miles as works vans. You'd think they put an armrest in the standard, but no, it's an option. Don't even get me started on the fact that this steering wheel doesn't adjust very much. In fact, it hardly adjusts at all. Let me just show you. If I even can. It goes in and out. And that's it. My audio got corrupted somehow for this, so I'm just going to talk over it and use it as B-roll instead. What I was trying to point out was, yes, it feels very commercial. You know, the Viano feels a lot more like a car, but this definitely feels like a van. There's no mistaking it. The uh, way it drives is definitely, you have to put a bit of effort in. And it doesn't feel natural at first, you just kind of get used to it. The way the gear ratios are means you have to stay in the rest for quite a reasonable amount of time. And, you know, you really have to force that gearing in, you know. It's not just like, a, say, a Volkswagen where it's just nice and smooth between the changes. You see there the way I'm doing it, I've gotten used to it by now. And there's always that thing where I wind up putting it in and out of first gear. A lot of that's because sometimes it doesn't feel like it's in gear. It's very difficult to tell sometimes. You can see from the position for driving that not having that armrest, I'm finding that very irritating and quite unnatural. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, if you're doing thousands of miles in this thing, then, you know, that lack of an armrest really starts to become noticeable. So do I recommend this van? No, I do not. No, I do not. Not at all. The only reason I winded up with this thing is because it was cheap. The only reason I bought a second one, well, a Vivaro 2.5, was again because it was insanely cheap. Uh, if I had a choice and I had the money, well, I, I wouldn't do so again. I would probably wind up going for something a bit more expensive. Uh, it's just the way it is. I mean, I think the only reason this thing actually exists is because companies buy vans in bulk and they don't always care about the quality. Uh, I don't think anything like this you'd be getting away with today. Luckily, they changed the design and shape in 2014 and the newer model is better, but it still suffers most of the same problems. It's still cheap, it still doesn't drive very well, and it's still pretty nasty overall. Uh, they're so much better than this. The, the Transit Tornio Custom from Ford, the Vito and Viano from Mercedes, well, the V-Class, they call it now, as of 2014. And... Um, even Volkswagen, the, the T5 might not handle much better than this, but it's still got a bit more quality about it. So at the end of the day, if anybody asked me if I would buy another one of these, I doubt it very much. And I don't advise you to either. Well, if you like to see me ragging on this damn thing, well, you know, you could always like and subscribe to see some more. Uh, if you didn't like what you've seen, well, don't worry about it. Just post it in the comments. I, I like constructive criticism. 
I guess trolling's kind of funny as well in a way, so I guess I've got no arguments for that either. But um, yeah, so uh, hopefully we'll have something a bit more interesting for next time. I don't know yet, we're just going to see how that goes. If anybody wants to get in touch and they want their cars featured, I promise I won't be as harsh as I was on this thing, okay? Anyway, till next time, look after yourselves.